The following program was produced by an independent community producer. The opinions expressed do not necessarily reflect those of the ECAT staff or board of directors. Hey, welcome to Auntie Zaza's Fireside Chat. We're here at Auntie Zaza's Fiberworks, your local yarn shop, and we're at 104 Main Street in Easton, Massachusetts. Thank you so much to Easton Community Access Television for featuring us today. We appreciate all that you do for our community. And today we're going to um, take a look at a couple of holiday projects that would inspire you in crocheting um, a pumpkin and a crocheted leaf garland. Before we get into that, I will uh, make a couple of announcements. We have some fun workshops that are coming up um, throughout um, the fall and into our, our winter season. Deborah is featuring crocheted granny squares um, each month, the first month, uh, the first week of the month on Saturday afternoon between 2.30 and 4, she is doing some basic um, instruction and in creating a granny square. The second session on uh, the Saturday, same time, 2.30 to 4, she teaches how to make different shapes. In the, th uh, the third session, she teaches uh, color work. And then the fourth week of each month, she teaches um, three-dimensional crochet. So how you take your granny squares and then form bags, ponchos, sweaters, vests, whatever it is that you're desiring to make with your project. So um, that's our crochet program from Debra. Uh, Roberta's offering a wonderful class in navigating the Ravelry website, which is a website for knitting and crochet um, where all of your uh, needs would be met in terms of pattern search and yarn substitutions. So she's a great educator about that. Um, her programs run on Wednesday morning from 1030 to 12. Uh, she's offering a program in felting a holiday sock. Uh, she also has a wonderful sock program. So uh, give us a call and we'll help, help you to find out about our fun workshops. Um, and Danute is um, offering classes on Thursday morning in weaving. Uh, she uses an inkle loom and is doing Baltic weaving as well as using the rigid heddle. Um, and she has a few other fun programs where she's teaching wet felting and making uh, the little Scandinavian ornaments um, using fiber through straw um, to create beautiful, beautiful ornaments. So if any of those interest you, give us a call and we'll be happy to get you signed up. Um, so without further ado, we'll uh, look at our program for today, which is um, a crochet class um, on um, creating a pumpkin. And uh, just for our fun, we found a nice pattern on uh, Yarnspiration, which is um, Inspirations about Crochet Project. And Deborah made this beautiful little garland that has um, little maple leaves. So we share that with the fun little seed beads in between. Um, that's a beautiful little pattern that we can help you if you're interested in that. We can uh, help you to reference it. The, it's called the Fall Leafy ba Banner um, that was available on Yarnspirations. The Fall Leafy Banner was the pattern that um, she used for that. So today, um, I'm going to be teaching you how to make this sweet little pumpkin. It's kind of looks a little more like a gourd. So depending on how um, tall you make your pumpkin, it will allow you to have a taller, larger pumpkin. Um, so how do we do this? I begin with a technique that's called the magic loop. Okay, to begin, we're going to create a magic loop. And what I like to do is actually, I, I think about it like the breast cancer ribbon. So I kind of come around my finger. I've got the tail here, and I'm coming over my index finger on my left hand because I'm a righty, and I make a little ribbon like this. Then I take my crochet hook, and I go under the loop that's wrapped around my finger, and I pull the strand up. 
And it's so awkward when we begin doing these projects because we're really creating something out of nothing. But here's the ring, and I have one loop, one strand over my crochet hook, and here's my working yarn, and here's the tail. I'm going to come over and pull through, and now I'm going to go right into the ring six times to make my, uh, my beginning row. So this is the cast on row two, and we just keep going around, and we get that foundation row for, I make it look easy. It's a little awkward as you're learning to do this. And there's my six. And then, now you can see it's a little donut. You can see my stitches coming around it. I'm going to pull my tail, pull, 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 pull. And it makes this nice little starting row. Then I'm going to go into each of my stitches and I'm going to put two stitches in each one. So I pull it through just a single crochet. Two goes into wiggle, wiggle, two goes into each one. Here's my next one. See how it's like a little V? In crochet, it's always tricky to figure out like where do you put the hook? So you're going to always go under two. Stab it in under the two like that. Yarn over, pull it out, two on the hook. Yarn over, pull through two. So you're going to stab, grab, get out of the hole, yarn over, pull through two. And we're going to go two into each one. This, when I was learning to crochet, I would bring it with me to the waiting room while I waited for my father to have his cancer treatment. And there was one day where a woman literally was sitting across from me in the waiting room and she jumped out of her seat and she said, what are you doing? What are you doing? You always go through two. You always go through two because I was going through just the front stitch, which that actually is a real stitch. It's called go through the front of the loop or I would go through the back of the loop. And that's also a real stitch. It's called go through the back of the loop. But what you want to do, unless it tells you otherwise, is you always want to go under two. So there we have the first row is two into every one. And then the next row you're going to do, um, you're going to go a single crochet, one into the next one, and then two into the second single crochet stitch. So it's going to be, I call them onesies. You do one single crochet and then two into the next one, and then one single crochet, and then two into the next one. And what you're doing now is you brought your 12 stitches, so you start with six, and then you have two into each one, then you have 12. Then the next row is gonna bring it up, the count up to 18. And what's happening is each row is now getting a slightly bigger, and I say you keep doing it until you've got five in between each one. And you can see it's starting to look a little like a hexagon. Can you see it? One, two, three. What did I do? Four, five, six, seven. Oh, this is seven. <laughs> Not quite a hexagon. So the, the, here where you can see this little line, that's where I did two into each one. So every row you're going to do one extra one. So we started with one single crochet and then two into the next one. On the next row, you do two single crochet and then two into the next one. On the next row, it's three single crochet and two into the next one. And you see each row, we increase it just by one extra stitch. And that's creating the diameter to get bigger and bigger. Then it's going to be looking like this. This is the bottom. Once you get the bottom created, then you're just going to go straight up. That's what creates the sides of the pumpkin. And then once you've reached the height that you want, you begin to decrease it. So a decrease is we're going to bring two of the stitches together. So you go in, pull up your loop, go in, pull up your loop, go yarn over, and pull through all three of them. Whoops, I caught it pull through all three, and then you do your <coughs> five stitches, two, oops. I think I had a smaller hook when I did it before. 
four, you do five stitches, and then you're going to do a decrease again. And this will similarly begin to bring the top of the project in a little bit more. I'm going to show you that again because I didn't tell you. So pull it up, pull the loop up, stab it in, pull the loop up. Now there's three on the hook. This is your decrease. Wiggle, 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 and pull it right through. You're going to be decreasing like that until you have a little hole like that. Then... I take the fiber fill and you're going to stuff it in. Loading it up through the hole. Beautiful. All right, so you get it stuffed so it's nice and pumpkin-y. Now to create this little effect of the shaping of the, the gourd or the pumpkin, um, we're going to um, take yarn and come through the center into the bottom, and we're going to strand it, and that's going to create that little pop-out effect. Before we close the top of the pumpkin, so I've got a little opening like this, I like to stick my finger into the center of the pumpkin and just kind of create almost like a little bit of a donut of the stuffing because it's a little awkward when you take your needle and we're gonna be trying to pass it through like this. It's just a little awkward if you don't have, um, kind of create a little pathway because the polyester fill ends up uh, kind of clogging up the works. All right, to close the top, it's not fancy. I just kind of grab, I grab kind of a little bit of the stitches along the top like this. And then I'm just going to pull it. And it just pulls it tight like that. I like my sound effects. So then what we're going to do is take the yarn. And we get it right into the center like this. And then you're going to pull it up like that and go down into the center again. See how that creates that nice little, wait a minute. Probably could have taken another little piece of yarn and I got it twisted around my finger there. Here we go. Anyway, so you kind of get the gist of it. I, I um, am just using the yarn that I use to close the top. So what I'm actually gonna do is kind of thread this through my work at the bottom and then get a longer strand because I need a longer strand to do this part. I'll give you the gist of doing it. You can you can actually um, let it be double stranded, which kind of makes it a little bit more, a um, little more secure as you're doing it. So, kind of either you, it doesn't matter whether you start at the top or the bottom. Actually, I might start at the top because then I'll have my tail there for sewing on my stem. All right, so I'm pulling it through the center again. And now I'm just gonna space it a little bit to the side. See, sort of like that. And then just go right through the center and right out through the bottom, the middle piece again. And we're just gonna keep doing that. I'll show you another pull through. Oh, that one ended up being kind of close together. So you can just, you can reposition them to get them, you know, so it's looking a little more lifelike. And again, go through the center, right out of the bottom. And see, I just spaced it over a little bit. Here's my new strand. I pull it through. It's kind of magical how it just starts to take shape. Isn't that neat? Do another one so you get the gist of it. Boom. Pull this guy over. I love these. These remind me of this little guy, the little jack-o'-lantern. My dad would always bring them home for us at uh, this time of year. We'd each get our own little pumpkin. That's it. Whoops. You can sort of see it's beginning to take shape. And then we're going to create a little stem. 
So just depending on how long you want it to be. I think I did like 12 stitches on this. Doesn't have to be exact because in nature it just is how it is. So you create your little chain and I just did a couple of rows and the way I got this little ridgy effect was as I had mentioned before, I just went into the back of the stitch with each stitch that I was doing. So coming into the back and just doing single crochets and it gives a little bit of that effect of how a plant, you know, the stems are in nature where it's a little bit um, of a little bit of a ridge from how the stem grows on the vine. And then, here I go. So this comes off because I haven't sewn it in yet. So I just place it right down into the center and take a little piece of your brown yarn. My little fancy technique, I always just put it right over my needle. I slide it through and then I pop it like that. Makes it easy to thread the yarn. So this, you just grab a little bit. It doesn't, this doesn't have to be fancy. This is the thing when I start creating stuff like this, I, I, I just remind myself, it's like, you know, this is not, you know, going into some competition for the best crochet thing you ever saw in your life. But I kind of stuffed the excess right down in the hole. I didn't even sew in the end, right? I get, just left this because once it's anchored, it's not going to go anywhere. And I just could go in and pick up a little stitch from the inside of the pumpkin on one side and then a little bit of the stem. And it, like I said, it doesn't really have to be very fancy. You can just put any of the excess, you can just stuff down into the hole. You pop through a little on that side, grab a little of the stem. I don't know, maybe I'm doing like six, maybe it's just one stitch for each of the, you know, the little sections. I'm really not even doing anything fancy. I'm just kind of like giving it a grab. I don't know, maybe I can grab one more. Then my little stem is secured. And this is kind of a funny way that I roll with it, which is I can just pop it through like this, pop it through to the other side and then I can cut it with a scissor, get rid of my excess, and there it is. Happy little pumpkin. I hope you have a wonderful Thanksgiving. Thanks for tuning in with us today. Stop by at Auntie Zaza's. We're at 104 Main Street, and you can find us online at AuntieZazas.com. We're at 774-269-6899. Come on by and have a good time. Take care.